this is Andy Tube. Before I start this video, I want to let you know that this video uh, is the third one that I'll be making with chapters. Um, I heard about chapters about a month ago. It's a YouTube feature that uh, lets you put the timing and titles for the chapters of a video so that if you uh, move your cursor or your arrow along the timeline, which they call scrubbing the timeline, you'll see the timeline broken into little segments. And if you stop on a segment, it'll have a little pop-up with a title, um, like introduction and uh, removing something, uh, installing, it this allows you to to scrub through the timeline and see the different chapters and go directly to information you may be looking for or when you come back to a video because you want to get some uh, information or you want to watch a certain part of it again you can go along that timeline and look for that chapter and then click on it and just start there so uh, I think it's a great feature and uh, I, I said this is the third video I've done it. I didn't mention it before because I wanted to see if people noticed it. But um, now you're aware of it so uh, it'll be in this video. And this video is going to be about checking and setting the height of the feed dog on a Singer Model 221 Featherweight. Um, we, we want the feed dog to be at the height uh, designed by Singer for the best operation. Um, and we don't want it too low. Maybe it doesn't control or pull the fabric enough. We don't want it too high, which can maybe damage the fabric or your presser feet or other attachments don't fit as well or work as well. Uh, now, some people customize their height because they do want a higher or lower um, setting than normal based on, on what they're crafting or the, the type of fabric uh, they're using. I know my wife has asked me to set her feed dog up higher if she was a sewing thick fleece because she, she wanted better control of it and the fleece was soft and she wanted to get the teeth up into it as much as possible. So that's what I'll be doing with this uh, video and the first thing I'll talk about is going through different manuals for for the model 221 and there's there's a few different versions of this over the years so remember this is a 1939 model um, if you see something different on your machine, um, you know. But I found different information. The first thing I came across that said that the feed dog should be adjusted to a height no more than 3 sixty-fourths of an inch above the needle plate. So the tip or point of the teeth should be no more than three slash six four inch. It's okay, that's that's fine. Uh, another one said that the full depth uh, of the rear teeth should be above the needle plate. And by rear teeth, they're they're talking about these teeth along here. Oh darn, I can't find my my pointer. They're talking about these teeth back here, the farthest from you when you're sitting in front of the machine. Because the feed dog itself, or this one at least, is curved, has a little curve to it. And uh, later in the video I'll be taking this out, show you how to take it out, stuff if you want. But uh, the full depth of the rear teeth should be above the neoplate. And, and what that means is the, the tooth is a little V-shape. Uh, with a point and then it's got a V between and when they say the full depth of the tooth they they mean that that bottom of the V between the teeth 
should be right at the top edge of the needle plate when you set the height. So that's a visual thing you can do if you have good enough eyes. You know, it shouldn't be the V below and it shouldn't be up above. Just the full depth of the, of the teeth, like that, kind of. And then I found another one that used a fraction. It said uh, 0.040 inch above the needle plate. So, brother, now which one is right? 3 sixty-fourths or 0 0.040? But Google being my friend, I found out that 0 0.040 is the decimal of the 364th fraction so it's the same so uh, that's what I'll be looking at is uh, the point zero four zero and I'll be using some feeler gauges to help me with that and I'll also be looking at the visual method you know a lot of people don't have access to these so I'll be looking at the method where you you try and see that the full depth of the teeth these last, you know, like three or four teeth back here are up above the needle plate. And I'll, sh I'll show you some uh, ways that you can check for that. Okay. So let's just start with the, uh, with the point zero four zero inch. And I've, I've got a couple of these feeler gauges I pulled out. Um... My thickest one was the uh, point zero three two. So then I pulled out the point zero zero eight to give me a combination of point zero four zero. Okay, so that's believe it or not, that's that's all the height of the <laughs> of the feed dog right there. That's how much it's supposed to come up above the needle plate. So. And, and, and to, to test the height, we're going to put the uh, feed regulator or stitch length be between 12 and 15 on, on the machine, okay? So I'll just go in there about that height. That's where you want that to be set. And then they say to turn the hand wheel towards you. So the feed dog comes up to its highest point. And uh, I do that a lot with just by touch as well as visual. You know, I got old eyes, so and a bright light on, uh, on shiny metal doesn't always work for me. Um, so a lot of times, besides looking, I'll just rest my finger on there. Because when, when I feel it coming up in the front headed towards the back, I can feel it come up and start moving. And then I can kind of tell when it starts to drop. So I can wiggle it back and forth until I feel it's at the highest point. Come down here a little bit. So with, with set for between 12 and 15 stitches... And the hand wheel turns, so this is at the highest point. The top of the teeth should be even with the top of my feeler gauge. Okay? And I can tell just by gently touching it, you know, sliding my finger across the feeler gauge and hitting the, the teeth, I can tell that this is high. These are set high. Um... Because I can feel the tips of the teeth sticking up above. Now I can also take uh, a little point here, and you know, if I if I drag it on there, uh, I'm going to drag it, and it's going to hit those teeth and just stop dead. It doesn't kind of bounce over them or hesitate; they just stop. So I know that that these teeth are up too high. Okay, now you can't do it in the front because of the curve. So remember, all these tests you're doing with, with about the last three or four teeth in the back here. Okay, 
So my feeler gauge test tells me they're too high. And uh, I don't know if my camera will pick it up very well. But the idea that you can... See, it's going to get blurry here. That you can get down and, and look... Um, with your feeler gauge on there and see do you do you see the tips of those well even I can see that through the camera so you see that the tips of these front well closest to me rear teeth <laughs> don't be looking back here okay look at the teeth closer to you and you can see that the the tips whoop, the tips that stick up above that feeler gauge. Okay, so just just a visual tells you that besides feeling or scraping with the blade. And then if you have good enough eyes, you can try and look in here at the V between the teeth and see uh, with these, you would see that the, the bottom of the V is sticking up a little bit higher than the plate. And then one other test that I developed because of my eyes is just a pin test. Let's see if I can maybe turn this this way. I just took uh, the thinnest pin I could find and I cut the head off okay and then I'll lay it back in the V of one of those back uh, teeth there and then um, let me get it in here I'm going to be turning the hand wheel towards me when it first comes up. If, if, um, if the feed dog lifts the pin off of the needle plate, which it's doing right there, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to too much, too much. Anyway, if you if you're watching that, then uh, if if the feed dog lifts that pin up, you're probably a little bit high. Now, I know the pin is round and the bottom V is very pointed, you know, so it's not going to be perfect. So if it barely lifted the pin, I might be hmm, okay. But this is this is just flat lifting the pin up clearly off of the needle plate. So that's another confirmation that it's too high. Okay. So all three of my my little scrape test and my feeder blade gauge blade test and my pin test all said yeah too high so if it's too high what do you do like a lot of these adjustments even though you're looking at this the adjustments on the bottom of the machine <laughs> yeah they couldn't make it easy you know they couldn't have like a little screw down in that hole that you eh, okay <laughs> so we're going to turn the machine over on its back and we're going to come and look at some stuff back here right so this uh, shaft or bar it's really called a shaft it's called the feed lifting rock shaft the feed lifting because that's what lifts the feed dog okay the other bar up here is uh, feed lifting I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. But this is the one that lifts it, and, and this one more rocks it in the oscillating pattern, and this is the one that lifts it 
uh, the height. So that's where we're going to adjust down here. And uh, you can see it moving back and forth as I'm turning the hand wheels, kind of rocking like that. And over here on the end of it right there is the feed bar that goes up through uh, just below the needle plate and the feed dog is screwed into this uh, feed bar so this bar lifts it kind of like up and down where this top bar uh, makes the oscillating like front to back or back to front movement okay and the way that we adjust it here is there's a locking nut uh, right here where these two pieces are screwed together there's a locking nut and there's an eccentric uh, screw so we're going to loosen this locking nut this is a 3 8 uh, 3 8 inch wrench and we're going to get it on there and just lift it up and loosen the locking nut so you already know what that locking nuts gonna do once we set it we'll tighten it back down and that will lock in our setting okay now on the side uh, over here is the head of the screw and it's a straight blade and it turns very easy if I could get my fingernail in there with around all this stuff, I could just turn it like that. But I can. There's a hole on the side of the end of the machine over here, and on mine I can sneak my screwdriver through the wires, and I can get access to that hole, or the screw, the, the slot in the screw. There we go. Okay. Right. And then, as you, now it's eccentric, it has a high and a low side. And the more you turn the high side of the eccentric screw towards this gear, the higher the feed dog is going to go. And you can, with your left hand, you can put your fingers on the feed dog up here, and you can start to feel if this is uh, true so here I'm coming up there yeah. so as I'm going to turn this uh, and remember you're you're the back teeth okay can you see this dropping down now as I I turn it, the, ex the eccentric screw is going to push that up. Do you see it come down? Not, not my screwdriver, but the, the hole on the end of the vertical shaft there is going to raise up and lower down. Raise up and lower down. And later in the video when I take that feed dog off, I'm going to take this apart and show you what an eccentric screw looks like. But that's what you have to turn. And mine was probably way up at the top because my feed dog is too high. So I'm going to try and just leave that screwdriver stuck in there because uh, I think the wire is going to help hold it in there. I'm hoping. I usually lay the machine on the back and stand up and look down over the top of the the edge of the machine here and peek down at my uh, feed dog but I think this will help me keep the screw in there so I've got to turn the hand wheel to get this to the high point of the rotation okay And I'm, I'm using the finger method. I'm going to, I feel it come up in the front and the feed dog getting higher and it starts moving towards the back. 
and as soon as I feel it start to drop then I'm going to turn the hand wheel backwards <laughs> a tiny bit and say that's my high point of the cycle now I'm going to um, let's go ahead and, and use the feeler gauge I'm going to put my feeler gauge on there and push it up against the side of that feed dog and look it just let me let me put the thinner blade on the top here so see how that it it won't stop the thinner blade if I use one blade it stops because the teeth are sticking up high enough to stop it okay then if I la add that last point zero zero eight on the top of there and I, and I know this is a fiddly little procedure you know but you, you don't have to do it very often if at all but when I try and push that up against my feed dog it slides right over it so that tells me that where I have the feed dog now is too low Since my testing indicates that it's too low I'm not going to turn the hand wheel or anything I'm going to start turning that screw towards the gear I showed you to raise that feed dog up. Okay, now when I put both of these against the feed dog, they both stop. So I know I'm high enough, but maybe I'm too high. So this is where you, you can feel it um, with your finger if you're sensitive and see do you feel the teeth back here sticking up above the blade or just about even with it. And you can you can drag your do your drag test again if you want. See now it, it it actually feels like it falls down a little bit. Make sure I'm on the back side here. Yeah, because your finger isn't flat, even though I felt the teeth, I think it's still a little bit low. So I'm going to keep turning and adjusting that's that eccentric screw see I'm not I'm not seeing it I'm not seeing it change so my screw might have fallen out let's try it again there it's a pretty minute when you're close it a little change with the screwdriver can move the feed dog height a lot so I don't know how how perfect you want to be or just to be in the range you know where mine before was was pretty pretty darn high I felt now this the drag test I can tell the tooth is a little bit higher than my blade. But not, man, just, it just barely. So I'm going to try and adjust it back a tiny bit. But believe me, it doesn't take much when you get this close. Now see. Uh, it went low again. <laughs> and I mean, I, I turned that screwdriver, I thought, about a sixteenth of an inch. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Very close out at the edge of that eccentric curve. Yep. That's too low. Darn, when I had it that close, I, I should have stayed right with it, huh? I keep worrying my screwdriver's going to slip out. Let's try it. 
try it one more time. It helps me if I miss it, I wiggle the screwdriver back and forth and make it go up and down. And then smaller and smaller increments there. Now that feels good to me. It, it comes off of my blade onto the top of the tooth and just just a barely little nick. So I would say that that's good. Okay. Now if I wanted, I could turn and look and see if that bottom of the V is showing or just about even with the edge of the needle plate. If I had your eyes, I could do that maybe. Okay, so now I'm going to have to tighten that lock nut. So I'm going to go back here, gently turn it over. You see my screwdriver still stuck in there. <laughs> I was lucky for that. Because literally, usually, I have to have the machine like this. And, and stand up and look down and put my hand down here over the top while I'm over here turning the screwdriver. But since these wires kind of held the screwdriver in place, because Singer tells you to have it flat on your bench and put the screwdriver in there. But I always have a hard time getting it in the slot and keeping it there. So anyway, now the idea is don't let the screwdriver move while you tighten that nut okay so just try and keep the screwdriver in place and I'm gonna finger tighten the nut and then I'm gonna put my wrench on here and hold the screwdriver uh, in place and tighten that nut without turning letting the you know, without letting the screwdriver turn, right? Get it nice and tight because it's a, you know, it's a working machine there. It's going to be going back and forth all the time. Okay. And let's see, by the way, there's the oil up here at the, up here at the top of that. You'll see a little hole back there. That is the oil port for that eccentric. See if I can get my my cord out of my face here. See if I can get a drop of oil in there to show you. Right there. That's where you oil that. There's a little hole right there in the housing. Okay. Hey, I don't know if you saw my electric flashlight video uh, before that uh, Carolyn Rogers sent me the plans and I, I made this electric flashlight. Well, my wife sold me a diffuser for it. When I do the video, I was seeing that all this bright stuff reflects back real bad in the camera. And uh, so I had her take an old handkerchief and she just cut out a round part of it and she, uh, you know, made a hem and put elastic inside there. So I got a washable uh, slip on cover that acts as a diffuser. So I still get plenty of light for the video, but um, it's not so reflective. And I tested it out on the shiny chrome parts too and stuff, and it does help. So that's what it, that's what it looks like. So that's handy now. I'm really, really happy with that. And let's go back up here. And then we could do we could do the test uh, all over again, you know, and check our check with our blades to make sure that we didn't disturb the setting. So we want between 12 and 15 on the stitch length, and we want to turn our hand wheel 
through the cycle so that our feed dog comes up at the highest point before it starts going back down and then we could do our blade test if we wanted touch test our drag test nice nice and even skitters right across okay you come and you look across that needle plate and you see if the uh, you know the teeth should be shown and just right at the bottom of the V if the bottom of the V is below the top of the needle plate it's a little bit low if you can see the the whole V sticking up above the needle plate you're too high so zero point uh, zero four zero inch or three sixty fourth or kind of do it by feel it's less it's a little bit less than all the way up <laughs> how's that okay so that's how you check and set the height of the uh, feed dog on a 221 featherweight if you want to hang in here I'm going to remove this uh, needle plate because I'm still having this kind of weird weird sound of thing there and I want to see if that's hitting something in there so I'm going to take it out and I want to clean the feed dog anyway and then uh, I'll show you the way you have to put the needle plate on with the positioning finger of the hook to be sure you get that properly and then I'm going to show you how to I'm just going to take this off dismantle it to clean it and I want to show you what that eccentric screw because we talk about eccentric pins eccentric studs eccentric posts eccentric screws so i thought you might want to want to see one those of you that haven't okay if you're leaving me now thanks for tuning in for this exciting episode of lala the 221 featherweight <laughs> and how to set the height of the feed dog okay and uh, if not, here we go. If you're staying with me, then we're just going to take these two screws out that hold the needle plate or throat plate. Singer Ashley called it a throat because this area is the throat of the machine. And then we're going to lift up the needle plate or throat plate to expose a better view of the hook and the feed dog. And I'll show you right now what I'm talking about. When you put this back on, uh, people don't realize that this has to be done. They'll take this off to clean or whatever and put it put it all back on, and then they'll say, "Wow, my I, I, I have terrible stitches. It won't sew." <laughs> And you see this little um, finger right here that's on part of the actually base of the bobbin case. That finger is a positioning finger. And it has to fit in this space right here on the bottom of the needle plate. So you have to have that turned up to the top there when you put the needle plate on okay because that finger has to end up in that space okay because that's what keeps the base straight while the hooks going around okay so if you don't have it up in there you can put the throat plate or needle plate back on, but you see this now? There's there's nothing holding it. So your bobbin is just going to be, bobbin case is just going to be flying around. It's going to get stuck up here on the side of that. 
and believe me you will not be happy so when you put the needle plate back on that positioning finger must go in that special slot for it just like that right up there like that so that it is stationary when the hook turns and your bobbin case will be stationary right and just the bobbin inside will turn as the thread comes off it okay so let me show you how I take the feed dog off here okay um, before I take the feed dog off I just want to uh, run the machine a little bit to see if that removing the uh, needle plate uh, stop my uh, noise problem here it didn't look to me like the feed dog uh, teeth were scraping or hitting the needle plate anywhere but let's see yeah and I still got some noise here so uh, that's one of the reasons I want to take this off and the other is to clean it you know it doesn't look too bad when you look at it but it can have a lot of impacted uh, lint and stuff here and behind and around it so I'm just going to take my little uh, mini ratchet here and uh, loosen these screws there's two screws on this featherweight that hold the uh, feed dog uh, into the feed bar that's lifted by the um, feed lifting rock shaft shaft and the feed rock shaft that we were looking at before on the bottom side of the machine so let's go ahead and of course you know since I've, I'm going to have these parts off I, I got to clean them <laughs> which will be easy to do so there is one of the little screws and, and these are uh, a common screw so classic used to sell them and I've seen them occasionally on other vendors and it was surprising the list of model numbers that these screws fit but they can be a little soft you, you see that the uh, slot is a little bit chewed up and disformed because they can be in there very hard and they're at a funny angle to get at on a lot of machines and uh, people use a poorly fitting screwdriver and that's why you'll see a lot of them chewed up these are not too bad um, I go by a saying that if if the uh, feed dog screws are perfect then nobody ever took it off the machine <laughs> or even tried that's how common it is to see these screws uh, chewed up and then here is the feed dog uh, see if we get it. here maybe get a little better picture of it right and it doesn't it doesn't look that bad does it but I can see down in between those teeth that there's uh, impacted stuff and uh, I've kind of brushed this off before I started filming so this isn't bad and what I liked about it was the teeth were nice and sharp still I mean they're not gonna cut me you know but sometimes when a machine has had a lot of use you, you can rub against those and they're they feel kind of rounded off and these are pretty good these are nice and pointy so I'll just put that here for now and uh, let's take a little bit better look down in there mm -hmm. yeah I can I can see all the old uh, dirt and the impacted lint and stuff like that you know that's that's very common 
they're not that hard to take off, you know, and it's it's not a bad idea like once in a while depending on how much you use your machine you should brush off your machine every time you you know finish using it just brush the lint off of here and the and the attention unit and the needle bar and stuff like that but maybe once a year you know you should get in here and really uh, scrub it out kind of let's go ahead and run this now and see if that made any difference I mean, maybe the feed dog was hitting part of the casting here nope that didn't do anything so I'm almost starting to think it's something with my hook or the bobbin case so I'll keep working on that and then I did want to if you're still interested I'm going to take off that uh, eccentric screw and stuff that we were working on down here when we set the height which means when I when I put it back I'm gonna to have to reset the height again right <laughs> but that's okay we know how to do that now no big deal I hope you're seeing how easy these machines uh, are to work on especially these vintage machines you know the parts are just so sturdy and well designed and well put together and you know just from watching this video if your feed dog was kind of worn out and the points were rubbed off you can you can buy a new feed dog or use vintage one and, and put it on there here's the locking nut so we'll take that off and then I'm just gonna kind of push that screw in and see if I can get over here and separate it which I did and of course it uh, slipped in there a little bit so let me get my little telescoping magnet thing here and pull it out we'll take a look at it lots of old black now you see that fresh oil I just put on there right but look at look at the old oil that's old dried up oil that's in there see how dark everything is mm -hmm. yeah so I'm going to clean these as I said and uh, I'll show you that um, uh, eccentric screw there when it's clean because it will be easier for you to uh, it'll be easier for you to see the eccentric part this is just uh, about a 25 percent solution I think it was of the crud cutter cleaner and degreaser so I'll just soak them in here for a while go check my email or something and come back to it after a few minutes and uh, I have one of these two for a dollar wire brushes from the dollar store and I'll kind of th these are really great for brushing out the teeth of that feed dog even while it's in the machine you can take the needle plate off and do that with this but uh, when I got them all clean and pretty I will come back and uh, show them to you okay all done uh, here's the dirty solution after cleaning uh, soaking those a few minutes and then brushing them off rinsing them and here's the clean parts so I've got a nice clean feed dog and I went ahead and did the screws for the needle plate since I was doing it and the screws that hold the feed dog and here's my nice pretty clean lock nut and here's the eccentric screw so it just starts looking like a hinge screw right that we've talked about before you've got a nice uh, you know flathead screw here nicely made you have a hinged area that this uh, part right there can hinge back and forth on and then at this end 
you have the screw in a little bit smaller hinged area and the screw and you know for the locking nut to go on so this doesn't have a set screw or something that holds it in place uh, it's just a screw so we, that's why we have the lock nut on there to keep this um, holding the parts together now I want to see if this uh, eccentric part is going to show. Let me, let me try. I'll try and show this here. Maybe I should have done some close-up photography. But you see how the hinge comes from the head, hinge part, and then there's barely a reduction right there. Okay. But if we go to 180 degrees to the high side of the eccentric, you'll see the same screw head and the same hinge area, but look at the drop off now. Wow, it's a lot deeper. Okay. And that is the eccentric part. Now watch while I turn it. You'll, you'll see the hinge part come up higher and then go back down lower. See it come up and it comes down. So you remember here when I was had my screwdriver through here and I was turning it and we were watching this part go up and come down, go up and come down that was changing the height of the feed lift rock shaft which was changing the height of the feed bar that's on a hinge screw over here and that's what was raising up the feed dog so that's how it does it you can see that it's off center here. Let me take this off now. You can see that it's off center, the hinge. You know, the, the head and the screw are like lined up like a normal uh, screw. But you'll see that the hinge part is not. It's off center. It's kind of pushed over this way on this side and that's what makes it eccentric and like cam stacks are that way that's why you have to uh, adjust that uh, eccentric post on a cam stack to bring the cam stack gear closer to the worm gear of an arm shaft so I just thought you might care to see that mm -hmm. and then of course you know to I'll just slip it back in here and uh, if I can get in here with this wiring and get it in there and then line it up with the other there we go and then I'll just put the lock nut on here a little bit. So, of course, I'm going to have to, uh, let's see, where's my flat side? I'm going to have to uh, reset the height of the feed dog, you know, and then I'll put some fresh oil on there. You see that feed dog? Wow, very nice. Very nice and clean. Lots of space in there to to take care of your fabric even like fleece or thicker flannel duck cloth denim plenty of room for it with all the impacted stuff out of there mm -hmm. and if you if you want let me move this out of the way so I don't spill it uh, I just want to mention one thing when whenever you put a feed dog on any machine or any any of the ones that I've worked on I, I have to assume newer machines are the same but um, 
if you see we'll see that uh, feed bar the end of the feed bar there going down and and uh, rotating I'll make a longer stitch now so you can see that or the reverse which will make it go from the back towards the front to, to pull the fabric to you when you reverse sew or back tack on the end of the seam but what I want to say about this uh, putting the feed dog back in is that you uh, wait a minute I am just going to put a drop of oil in there. I always, I always do this. Um, when you put it in, you, the the clearance on the slot of the needle plate and the teeth of the feed dog. Oh boy. Let me make sure I got this up as high as it'll be. It's easier to reach over the hook on this. Um, is you don't want to like put this one on, and and I know it's kind of hassle to get a screw in the screwdriver in there, but don't just put on one and tighten it all the way. There's a little bit of play in here, okay, and the clearance uh, in of the slots in the in the needle plate or throat plate is very close. There's not a lot of room on, on uh, especially these vintage machines. There's not a lot of space between the feed dog tooth and the slot. And that's on purpose to help keep lint from continually going down in there into your hook and stuff. Because it's, it's always grabbing your machine. Every stitch, right? It moves the fabric, grabs it, presses it up against your presser bar, your presser bar is pushing down, you got some lint flying off. So if you, come on you, if you tighten one side down, your feed dog may not be flat and it may not be uh, straight. And when you put your needle plate back on, it might Good grief. It might um, scrape on the side of the slot. I told you I have trouble with this machine getting screws started. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's, it's very finely machined. I don't know why. Maybe I'm losing my touch. <laughs> So what I like to do when I put it on is I'll just uh, tighten it until it first stops. I won't twist it beyond that point. So that's what I just call, you know, like, like uh, I guess you'd say finger tight, if that. See, it's still moving here. Then I'll come back to the other side and I'll get that. And then you're still still moving around a little bit, but you want to be sure that it's so I wiggle it. I just kind of wiggle it as I keep tightening it a little bit at a time until there's no play left in the screws. Okay, and then I find that usually uh, I'm confident that it's flat and that when I put the uh, needle plate um, oops, back on here that I'm going to have the correct clearance in those slots and, and I don't know can you see how how close I mean the slot is just barely bigger than the width of those teeth you know so if you ever have that uh, feed dog off or you've changing out a feed dog and you put everything back together and you hear a little zing 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 or worse it it very well could be the side of the teeth scraping on that opening in the slot but if you tighten them a little bit at a time evenly like that you won't have that problem hey hey okay 
That's checking and setting the height of the feed dog and removing and replacing the needle needle plate, the throat plate properly with that positioning finger of the bobbin case base up into the special slot they made for it. And you know how to adjust that now on the bottom. And you've seen a little bit, hopefully, better picture of what an eccentric screw looks like. And an eccentric stud would kind of be the same, except instead of threads on the end, there'd be a, a place to put a set screw into it, and maybe a flat spot on the stud. Mm -hmm. So, ta-da! Look at that! Look at that! Thanks for for uh, sticking with me to the end of this. Hope it was worth your time. You learned a couple more things. And I hope you'll come back and uh, uh, see some more videos of Lala, this little $50 Singer Featherweight. It's come along well, don't you think? Look how smooth it, it moves. I haven't even cleaned the gears or anything. Hey, my nice feed regulator working beautifully. Whew. Please, come on back and join me. In the meantime, uh, stay safe and uh, stay out of trouble. How's that? <laughs> Take care.